Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we're going to talk about a couple of different tools, including Face Fusion, that are next generation face swappers. Now, for those of you who could cut through the BS here, um, what face swappers are are deep fakes. And so this is a really uncomfortable video for me to do because face swaps or deep fakes have this huge ability to um, create misinformation to, um, to to wreak havoc on both s small scale and large scale issues. And so, for example, um, we could put my face or uh, the face of a prominent political figure in in someone else's speech. And combining a couple of these new uh, machine learning and AI tools, you can create very convincing but fake videos. And so underlying all of what we're going to talk about today is this idea that um, this is a deeply disturbing technology and we have to look at it. One, look at our own conduct to be responsible, to be moral, to be ethical. And so for me personally, I use this for meme building, not the most constructive way of using it, but others are using it for legitimate purposes like video editing, um, uh, creating uh, faces, swapping out the same person, but maybe a healthier version of them, uh, different ways for you to edit and enhance videos. Again, not always the case that these are good actors. And so I did struggle thinking about whether it's appropriate for me to, to put out a video demonstrating how you would go about this. But the other really, really important point we need to talk about today is that deep fakes are simply a reality. Not talking about it, not exploring it is a real problem because if nobody talks about Photoshop and the idea that I could put my face into any image I want, um, we wouldn't have this awareness. Today, we all know, uh, at least the vast majority of us know that you can't necessarily trust an image because you can Photoshop it. You can add elements, you can remove elements, you can modify elements. But that same realization just isn't true for videos just yet. and. The reality is you can edit digital media, you can add elements, remove elements, and if you have a lot of time and money, you can do just about anything with digital media. Face swaps, deep fakes, are now entering this phase in which it's becoming very accessible. And so Roop, the original tool here, is a one-click face swap. It's no longer looking frame by frame trying to make it pixel perfect. You're combining a bunch of machine learning and AI tools so that you could put my face into a video with one click. And so uh, Roop is something quite worrying to look at. And part of what we're doing today is showing you just how easy it is that someone with 15, 20 minutes to spare can create uh, maybe not pixel perfect videos, but reasonably um, convincing videos uh, to, to disseminate. And so again, underlying all of this is this idea that you need to think about what technology is doing and what your use of technology is and what everyone else's use is. And so we could close our eyes, pretend it doesn't exist, but that doesn't help. Part of this channel, part of what we're doing is looking at what tech is out there and and to, to make others aware of them. Okay. Long spiel aside, uh, these tools are incredibly simple to, to use. Uh, Roop has been discontinued and there are many forks, four and a half thousand forks, so lots of variants. Um, and originally I was looking at Face Fusion, which is one that continued from uh, one of the original contributors to Roop. Um, it looks very clean. Um, it, it, it looks like it works very well, but I was going to explore another fork um, because I ran into issues with face, fu face fusion the first time I did this unscripted uh, coding video. So I have a scrapped video. I couldn't get 
face fusion working. So I looked at other forks, and this one is another big one that seems relatively popular. Um, it's called Roop Unleashed, and again, we're digging down into this uncomfortable area because it, it specifically says it's uncensored. Um, some of the checks and balances that came with Roop that comes with face, face fusion just isn't available on Roop, uh, Roop Unleashed. <laughs> again, just uh, there are ways you can misuse these tools, and, and we certainly don't want to do that. But it exists, it's out there, and, and we should be aware of it. Anyways, um, we're going to take a look at how we install this one. Um, first of all, we're going to download Roop. Uh, we're going to pip install the requirements. And then uh, if we want to use GPU acceleration, uh, it seems like there are additional per, uh, pip install pieces as well. And if you've done anything related to Python, you'll realize this is par for the course. This is extremely simple. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead, download um, Roop Unleashed here. And we're going to open the file. Uh, you'll notice that you have you can download the models right here at 1.6 gigs. So uh, all of these tools uh, do download a lot of things on the side. Uh, I would spare like two or three gigs of free space just to install the software because these models are sizable. Anyways, uh, the other thing I have ready is I have an empty folder, Roop, in my projects. Uh, I have two files in here already. This is our target um, video file and just a picture of my face. Um, so for all intents and purposes, this is an empty folder. We're going to drag Roop Unleashed into here. Give it a second. This doesn't quite look right but uh, we'll give it a second to actually transfer over. You know what, I'll cancel out and try again. There we go. Okay, um, we're gonna double click. Oh, this is not what I wanted. So I'm gonna delete this. What I want is the source code. So let's open this one up and drag this one in instead. So you'll notice there is an installer. Now, uh, that is one way to go about it, but I have found that um, I have found that I generally prefer to grab the source code off, off GitHub where possible. Anyways, uh, we're going to change the directory cd into this folder and we're going to uh, create a virtual environment. This is so that um, when we install all of those requirements, it doesn't go across my computer. It's just limited to this uh, project alone and I can delete it very easily afterwards. Again, part of the problem is these are fairly large size, so I don't want just you know two, three gigs worth of stuff hanging out on my computer forever. And so being able to delete it is going to be very helpful. So we'll activate the virtual environment. And what we're going to do is follow the installation instructions here. So instead of cloning, we actually downloaded it. Uh, we created a virtual environment. We are, oh, um, we should cd into group unleashed. Oh, sorry, we're already in the right folder. Uh, and then we're going to pip install the requirement. So this is all the reliant packages. What is happening? Copy and then paste. There we go. Uh, this is going to take a moment, so I'm just going to pause my video here.
Okay, so I struggled a little bit with getting this running. Um, it seems like these software aren't perfectly polished, which is perfectly fine. Uh, what I did do was instead of going, well, let's go back here. Instead of using the latest release, I just downloaded the code as a zip file. And what's cool is that we are at 3.0.8 instead of 3.0.5. And everything looks very similar. All the steps are exactly the same. We just downloaded it, installed the right requirements. Um, everything so far is exactly the same. But what is cool is now when I drag my face into here, uh, it recognizes immediately. And that was what I was expecting um, in terms of speed as well. Now, next one is uh, the video that I picked. Again, politicians, this is the easy one, um, Obama. Um, this is the easy one we should be concerned about. We'll try and swap the frame. You get a preview here. Uh, and yeah, this is kind of like me. I wish I picked one that was closer to where I am. And we'll just refresh. And so uh, let's, can we zoom in? No, I guess not. Um, let's look at the original again. So obviously it looks like Obama. And then if I take this, I can see my face here. And I think we can maybe play with this blend enhanced image. Let's see if that looks any different doesn't look that all that different. And so what's interesting here is that the hairstyle hasn't changed, but it clearly looks uh, like more like me. And it, it even accomplishes the fact that the angle is a little bit different. Um, so this image of myself is dead on. I am looking straight at the camera, but these ones I'm off to a side and it's somehow compensating for that and it looks reasonable. I don't necessarily think that's my jawline, but there seems to be some sort of blend between my face and Obama's. Um, if we just click start, I think what we're going to see is, is a progress bar here. So, um, you know, five or six frames a second. Uh, I only took a four second video clip here just to make this very quick for us to look at. I'm going to open the output now. And let me zoom in and look at that looking very presidential. <clears throat> and that's all there is to it. And if we wanted to do this into, you know, a 30 minute long video, a one hour long video, it doesn't take all that much time. Now we ran into some issues, but realistically installing this could be a five or 10 minute job, uh, dragging the files and then you wait you know, double, maybe triple. Uh, actually, let's take a look here. Um, it took us 18 seconds for a four second video. So four and a half times uh, speed. So a half hour video, we might take um, two and a half hours to, to create. Very, very, very quick. And albeit this is not perfect, but uh, it's, it's actually quite, quite interesting. Um, it actually looks pretty decent. So let's let's go through this again. Uh, imperfect, you can see the hairlines a little bit. I think for the most part, we should be doing it the other way. If I wanted to do misinformation, I'd put Obama's face on something I'm doing. Um, that's all there is to it. I, I hope this is an eye opener for you because this is so simple to do and this is uh 
so damaging if people don't realize how easy and how possible it is. Um, and, and we could do more. Uh, I'm looking at the options here, post-processing, so maybe there's some cleanup as well that will make this image look even better. And maybe, uh, and, and you could always have done this, you could go into each frame and make those modifications. Um, I hope that was interesting. I hope that was entertaining. Uh, bit worrying and again I want to stress that you now know how to use this let's use this responsibly but also I think it's an important job to go out there and let people know that deep fakes exist and it's actually very trivial to, to do albeit an imperfect one next week we should be doing something uh, AI related as well but we I think we're good with the deep fake so we might move on to another project Thanks for watching and see you soon.